everyone, welcome to the second video of Barry Harris month. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some rhythm changes. Per usual, I'm going to break that chorus down in two videos. This is the first one, we're going to look at the first half. And then there will be a second video, which I will publish on Patreon, which is accessible to my patrons at the $10 level and higher. So let's get started with phrase number one. One, two, three. One, two, three. This also gives us a chance to see what a bebop player might play on rhythm changes, the chords of I Got Rhythm, and of course, especially in this case, what Barry Harris thinks about those changes and how to approach them. So he starts with a phrase which is purely based on outlining a B flat major triad. Those notes are important. That's a, a full B flat major triad. That's embellishing the root. But he ends the line on the 6, so he ends the line on a color note. But one thing to notice is that he's not really following the changes B flat, 6, G minor, C minor, 7, F7, and it's completely not necessary. If you would simplify that, you would just get B flat for one bar, F7 for one bar, or you could simplify it even further and just think B flat. And that's exactly what is happening here. Let's go to phrase number 2. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. And in this phrase, we can see a tactic that I have talked about in other videos about rhythm changes, and that is to change your general sound, your general harmonic concept starting in bar five. So in this bar, he starts outlining kind of a B flat blues sound. It starts on B flat major in bar five, but halfway he starts going to B flat seven blues. So there you get the flat seven and the flat three. And those are two sounds that you would normally associate with B flat blues. So it's easy to employ that tactic yourself. You first start just playing four bars of B flat. And then you go to blues. And of course there's many variations possible, but you see it's a it's a good sounding and an easy thing to use. Let's go to the next phrase. Three, four, one, two. One, two. I noticed when I was reviewing the slow demonstrations that I skipped two bars, uh, which are not in the tab also. I mean, they are in the tab on my Patreon, but you didn't see them on screen just now. And those bars are bar eight and nine, and they sound like this, one, two. But it's a simple phrase. And again, it's just B flat, B flat six, but mostly based around the B flat. Try it. So he goes right back to outlining that B flat major sound. Also in the next phrase, some nice chromatics, but it's still based on a B flat major. Try it. And now is something interesting. He goes to F7 to B flat seven to E flat major. So he's thinking F7, B flat seven, E flat, and of course. 
the rhythm changes changes there are actually B flat seven or B flat six, uh, two beats B flat seven. This is bar five of the second A. B flat six, B flat seven, to E flat. And so instead of thinking B flat six, B flat seven, he thinks F seven, B flat seven, E flat. And that's also a really nice tactic that I actually haven't used myself before. So something to remember. Four bars of B flat, and then two beats F seven, two beats B flat seven to E flat. Let's go to the final phrase of this video. One, two, three, four. Three, four. So here Barry just ends the second A with a phrase that clearly signals we're ending in B flat. And then we're gonna go to the bridge. And I really like that phrase, there's a bebop skill in it. The, the D7 bebop skill. And although I know that Barry Harris really doesn't like to use that name bebop skill, I use it because everybody knows what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a major skill where you add an extra note between the seven and the six. So instead of playing a normal major skill, you add a C to that. So that is what is happening here, but then Barry Harris also approaches the root of that scale with two chromatic approach notes. And an excellent phrase to focus on your swing, because it's all alternate, so really try to make it swing. That concludes the first part of this tutorial on a course by Barry Harris on rhythm changes. Of course, if you want to download the tab for what you saw today, including the two missing bars, you can download it from my Patreon already at the $5 level. And if you want to have access to the second video in which we're gonna talk about the second half, then you can find that video for my patrons at the $10 level and higher. I want to close out this video with an ad for my just released book, The Van Hammert System, and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>you just listened to a jazz guitar solo on the chords of the tune Ergin. If you are a guitar player and you always wanted to play jazz but had no idea where to start, I have a solution for you. I just released a book called The Van Hammert System, which describes the system I used myself to learn how to improvise like you just heard. The methodology is completely based on learning a couple of shapes across the guitar neck that will enable you to improvise on every jazz standard you can think of. Of course, it's gonna take a while to become proficient at playing those shapes and how to apply them, but you don't have to learn anything else. No music theory, no skills, no arpeggios, no fretboard identification, no ear training, just learning those shapes and how to apply them. That's what I did myself and you just saw the result. If you are interested in learning to play jazz guitar like that and you are in the US, order my book in the web store of jungleguitars.com and if you are in Europe, send a mail to this email address. Bye.